It's the spice that tops your holiday eggnog, in your Christmas baking, and is even used in medicine. Discovered in a remote Asian island, this spice has taken over the world. The seed is actually the source of two different spices. We're exploring the history and origins of nutmeg. Welcome to another serving of Seasons Eatings, the podcast which explores the history and origins of your favorite Christmas foods. Seasons Eatings can be found wherever you download your favorite podcasts. If you haven't already, I would ask you to subscribe. That way you won't miss an episode when it's released, and all future episodes will be available without having you search for them. If you can please take a minute and leave me a five-star review, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you let me know you've left a review, I'll send you a Seasons Eating sticker as a personal thank you. If you can't leave a review, then all I ask is to share this podcast with anyone you think will love to learn more about our favorite Christmas foods. Seasons Eatings is also found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All the links can be found in the show notes, which can be found at seasonseatingspodcast.com. And while you're there, you can buy me an eggnog. Just click on the little cup at the top of the page and leave a donation for as little as $3. Each donation is used in the running of the podcast and its general upkeep, so any help would really be wonderful. Finally, you can let me know how I'm doing. Leave a suggestion for future episodes or just say hello at seasonseatingspodcast at gmail.com. All links for the podcast can be found in the show notes. East of Java is an archipelago of 10 tiny islands. Today, a population of about 15,000 clings to these beautiful volcanic rocks that are surrounded by white beach sands and deep ocean abyss. Warm, crystal clear waters and colorful reefs abound in marine life. They beckon divers to explore this place, one of the most unspoiled dive spots on the planet. These are the Banda Islands, and they are covered in nutmeg trees. Nutmeg trees may reach a height of about 20 meters or 65 feet. They yield fruit eight years after sowing, reach their prime in about 25 years, and bear fruit for 60 years or longer. The fruit is a pendulous droop, similar in appearance to an apricot. When fully mature, it splits in two, exposing a crimson-colored areal surrounding a shiny brown seed, the nutmeg. The pulp of the fruit is eaten locally. After collection, the areal enveloped nutmeg are conveyed to curing areas where mace is removed, flattened out, and dried. The nutmeg are dried gradually in the sun and turned twice daily over a period of six to eight weeks. During this time, the nutmeg shrinks away from its hard seed coat until the kernels rattle in their shells when shaken. The shell is then broken with a wooden truncheon and the nutmegs are picked out. Dried nutmegs are grayish brown ovals with furrowed surfaces. Nutmeg is the seed, or the ground spice derived from that seed, of several tree species of the genus Myristica. Fragrant nutmeg, or true nutmeg, is a dark-leaved evergreen tree cultivated for two spices derived from its fruit, nutmeg from its seed, and mace from the seed covering. It is also a commercial source of nutmeg essential oil and nutmeg butter. Indonesia is the main producer of nutmeg and mace, and the true nutmeg tree is native to its islands. Ancient writings do not disclose who first discovered the riches hanging in the fragrant Myristica trees. Nutmeg and mace are frequently mentioned in the oldest scriptures of Hinduism in India, the Vedas, composed between 1500 and 1000 BC. 
Nutmeg was recommended for improved digestion and was prescribed for headache, neural problems, fevers from colds, bad breath, and digestive problems. We do know that before the 6th century AD, nutmeg had been carried to Byzantium, a Greek colony that was later named Constantinople, and later still, Istanbul. Why they changed it? I can't say. People just liked it better that way. Arab traders bartered the spice as far west as Rome, where it was not used just as a flavoring, but was prized even more for its powers as a medicant, an aphrodisiac. Nutmegs and maces' arrival in China was much later than in India. The first reference of what could have been nutmeg does not appear until the 3rd century CE, in Jihan's Nafang Kamu Zwang, which was the record of southern plants and trees. In it, he mentions a fragrant spice that comes from a tree whose flowers are colored like a lotus. Nutmeg is not commonly mentioned in the Chinese literature until the 8th century, where it's used to treat diarrhea, dysentery, abdominal pain, and bloating, reduced appetite, and indigestion. Nutmeg and mace were largely unknown to the West until the 5th or 6th century. Pliny was the first to write about a tree he called Comacum, which had a fragrant nut, but it's not certain if he was really referring to nutmeg. The first century Greek physician Dioscorides also vaguely refers to a red bark of unknown origin called masir. The first clear references to nutmeg and mace are not found until the Byzantine medical text of the 6th century, which referred to a red bark Masis and a musky nut, Nux muscata, or nutmeg. The Arabs were the first to use nutmeg extensively in food preparation. In fact, spices were greatly appreciated across all the Middle East for their fragrance and medicinal purposes, as well as for their enhancement of flavor in food. Herodotus, the ancient Greek writer, geographer, and historian, wrote in the 5th century BC of the spices of Arabia, that the whole country is scented with them, and exhales an odor marvelously sweet. In his highly regarded al Qunun fi al-Tib, the canon of medicine from 1025, Ibn Sina recommended three-eighths of a dram of nutmeg with a small quantity of quince juice for weakness of the stomach, and he described nutmeg as a potent anesthetic concoction. Nutmeg played a dominant role in the popular 13th century Syrian cookbook, Kitab a Wusla a Il Habib, and in an anonymous Andalusian cookbook. When the King and Queen of Scotland celebrated the Feast of the Assumption in 1256, their food was spiced with 50 pounds each of ginger, pepper, and cinnamon, 4 pounds of cloves, and 2 pounds each of nutmeg and mace. At the marriage of the Duke of Bavaria Landshut in 1476, the banquets required 205 pounds of cinnamon, 286 pounds of ginger, and 85 pounds of nutmeg. And nutmeg has always been fantastically expensive. A 14th century German price table lists the value of a pound of the spice as equivalent to seven fat oxen. One might think of it as the beluga caviar of the 1300s. In 1453, the Ottoman Turks conquered Constantinople. Their embargo for this western route forced Europeans to seek a new eastern trade route. Columbus sailed the Atlantic looking just for such a passage, and in 1497 Vasco da Gama rounded the Cape of Good Hope and landed at the Malabar coast, India, proclaiming, For Christ and Spices. He was close, but still so far away. Eventually, it was the Portuguese, in 1511, who annexed the Malacca Islands of Indonesia, of which Banda is a small part. 
The fortresses established there sealed the deal on a monopoly that would last almost 100 years. The Banda Islands became the scene of the earliest European ventures in Asia to get a grip on the spice trade. In August 1511, Alfonso de Albuquerque conquered Malacca, which at the time was the hub of the Asian trade, on behalf of the King of Portugal. In November of the same year, after having secured Malacca and learning of Banda's location, Albuquerque sent an expedition of three ships, led by his friend Antonio de Abro, to find it. Malay pilots, either recruited or forcibly conscripted, guided them via Java, the Lesser Sundas, and Ambon to the Banda Islands, arriving in early 1512. The first Europeans to reach the Banda Islands, the expedition remained for about a month, buying and filling their ships with Banda's nutmeg and mace, in which Banda had a thriving entrepôt trade. An early account of Banda is in Suma Oriental, a book written by the Portuguese apothecary Tomé Pires, based in a Malacca from 1512 to 1515. Full control of this trade by the Portuguese was not possible, and they remained participants without a foothold in the island. In order to obtain a monopoly on the production and trade of nutmeg, the Dutch East India Company, the VOC, waged a bloody battle with the Bandanese in 1621. Historian Willard Hanna estimated that before this struggle, the islands were populated by approximately 15,000 people, and only 1,000 were left. The Bandanese were either killed, starved while fleeing, exiled, or sold as slaves. The company constructed a comprehensive nutmeg plantation system on the islands during the 17th century. But there was still one island. That is the one island of the ten that was not under the thumb of the Netherlands. It was the English who controlled it. And for 60 years, there were countless skirmishes and truces between England and the Netherlands. Eventually, a compromise was reached. The English agreed to swap Run Island for a small trading post in the Americas. Perhaps you may have heard of it. Manhattan. By 1669, VOC was employing 50,000 people utilizing 10,000 soldiers and 200 ships, and still was able to pay its shareholders an annual dividend of 40%. This perfect absolute control began to fall apart when Pierre Poivre, a French horticulturalist, smuggled out nutmeg seeds and successfully transplanted trees in the French colonies of Mauritius. So why was nutmeg so highly coveted? We'll find out after the break. On the Snow in Southtown Christmas podcast, we discuss Christmas movies, Christmas music, and we have fun segments where we always talk about something weird and something fun related to Christmas on each episode. If we're tired of making fun of Michael Bublé, I might recommend Pentatonics. I'm not going to play you two on this, on this podcast. Thank you. He's eating ice cream and crunch taters. He's just partying, man. Thank God it's them instead of you, right? I was going to say he was rolling over in his grave, but I don't think he's dead. But Well, he's still doing it. When he heard Patty LaBelle, he <laughs> dug his grave and he rolled in it. <laughs> How about 10s and 20s? 10s and 20s. Be sure to check out our website at snowandsouthtown.wordpress.com where you'll find links to our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Discord. Uh, yeah, I'd like the tiny tots, please. <laughs> you need a, some small tater tots? Yeah, yeah, your tiny tots. He told them the whole time. They know one beagle. Fire that up. Speaking my language now. You can stream our podcast at iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, and anywhere else you get your podcast. It's a problematic movie. Yeah, we should pee together at least once per decade, really. He is Dallas Snow Sato because he is jingling He's jingling, jingling those bells. bells. So I'm jingling them bells. Jingling those bells. Look what you did, you little jerk. Check out Snow in Southtown. You won't you regret it. And by won't, I mean will. <laughs> Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas! 
Greetings, holiday shoppers. I'm Joseph Wade, and I host a podcast called Christmas Creeps. My band of merry mischief makers and I dissect holiday movies and specials all year round in search of the true meaning of Christmas. So whether you can't resist the urge to watch Home Alone in June, or you worship at the altar of mutant killer snowmen, Christmas Creeps is the podcast for the Grinch in all of us. Check us out at christmascreeps.com or wherever you download podcasts. It's the 17th century, and the love of nutmeg has taken over the world, and a few people have become very rich selling this one spice. Why was it so popular? One factor was simply the economy of supply and demand. It was very rare, and it was reported to have the ability to ward off the plague. This certainly came in handy during the Black Death in the Middle Ages. Who knows? Fleas seem to dislike the smell of nutmeg, so perhaps there really is something to the medicine of nutmeg. According to the ethnomedical literature, nutmeg seed oil was used for intestinal disorders by Indians, in embalming by Egyptians, and to cure plague by the Italians. In ancient times, nutmeg seeds were used as medicines as an aphrodisiac, an anti-flatulent, a narcotic, and as a means to induce menses. The effect of the nutmeg seeds on the central nervous system was first observed in the early 19th century. Traditional uses of nutmeg seeds include treatment of hemorrhoids, chronic vomiting, rheumatism, cholera, psychosis, stomach cramps, nausea, and anxiety. Nutmeg seed oil has also been used as an antiseptic, an analgesic, and anti-hermatic properties. No other spice has the intense and sweet yet musky flavor of nutmeg. Blame it on myristicin, a volatile oil that's found in other plants such as carrots, celery, dill, and parsley, but in over-the-top quantities in nutmeg. Ingested in small amounts as a spice, nutmeg produces no noticeable psychological or neurological response. But in large doses, both raw nutmeg freshly ground from kernels and nutmeg oil have psychoactive effects, which appear to derive from anticholinergic-like hallucinogenic mechanisms attributed to myristicin. Myristicin is an oxidase inhibitor and psychoactive substance. It can actually cause convulsions, palpitations, nausea, and generalized body pain when consumed in large amounts. Nutmeg may also interact with anxiolytic drugs, that is, drugs that will help produce anxiety. And nutmeg may also produce allergic reactions, cause contact dermatitis, and evoke acute episodes of psychosis. That is being said when the nutmeg is taken in larger than average doses. And nutmeg is actually toxic or can be toxic to animals. So if you have large amounts of it around you, please keep your pets away. That being said, why do we associate this spice with the holidays? Well, one reason could be is that it has that warm, earthy flavor. Shakespeare mentions the spice of nutmeg in his play three times. Once in Henry V to comment on the color of the spice once in Love Labor's Lost to talk about the gift nutmeg, which was a gift given at Christmas for the 16th century, and then again in The Winter's Tale, when the clown lists nutmeg as one of the spices he needs to make warden pies, along with mace, dates, prunes, and raisins. Being so expensive, you would only use it during the more festive or religious occasions such as Christmas. Also, giving the gift of nutmeg would show your wealth and status in the community. Not only would you use it in your household, you could afford to give extra as gifts to others. And while nutmeg is a holiday staple, there's actually an American state which has nutmeg as its unofficial nickname, Connecticut. One of the earliest references to this name in literature 
was in the book State Names, Flag Seals, Songs, Birds, Flowers, and Other Symbols by George Early Schenkel, published in 1941. According to Schenkel, the story's originator was Sam Slick, a fictional character created by Judge Thomas Chandler Halliburton of Windsor, Nova Scotia, Canada. The nickname was given to Connecticut because its early inhabitants had the reputation of being so ingenious and shrewd that they were able to make and sell wooden nutmegs. But there's no proof that New England sellers actually sold wooden nutmegs. It's not clear if anyone did that, or if it originated in the idea that Yankee peddlers were so good at their business that they could even sell you a wooden nutmeg, said Natalie Blanger, adult programs manager at the Connecticut Historical Society. However, the Connecticut State Library published an excerpt from a 1980s issue of the Connecticut Magazine in which writer Elizabeth Abb gave an alternate explanation. Abb wrote that traders did sell nutmeg to foreign customers who didn't know how to use it. Customers thought the nutmeg needed to be cracked, like a walnut. Nutmegs are wood and bounce when struck. If southern customers did not grate them, they may well have accused the Yankees of selling useless wooden nutmeg, wrote Abb. Regardless of the origin story, the state residents have claimed the nickname. And with cooking, nutmeg goes well with both sweet and savory dishes. It's widely used in fruit cakes, fruit desserts, and fruit punch. It's good in stews and most egg and cheese dishes, white and cheese sauces with potatoes, carrots, pumpkin, squash, cabbage, cauliflower, a little bit of ground nutmeg in stewed fruits enhances both flavor and visual appeal. Nutmeg is also a necessary ingredient in many other Christmas favorites, such as mulled cider, mulled wine, and eggnog. Nutmeg also serves as a delicious topper to a hot cup of tea or a milkshake or even hot cocoa. You can add even a little bit of nutmeg to a fruit smoothie for a warming effect or in a tomato soup for an unusual depth of flavor. The rich smell of nutmeg will surely fill the air in many kitchens during the Christmas season. Be it the traditional Christmas cake, the tried and tested Christmas pudding, or the magical Christmas fruit mince pies, who can do without some grated or powdered nutmeg? Thank you for listening to this serving of Seasons Eatings. Seasons Eatings is available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Please leave a review to the show so we can spread the Christmas cheer. Also, I would love to hear from you. Send me an email at seasonsingspodcast at gmail.com and let me know how you like the show, suggestions for future episodes, or just to say hi. And if you let me know you've left a review, I'll send you a Seasons Eating sticker for your trouble, as well as my unwavering gratitude. If you're feeling extra generous this season, you can buy me an eggnog. Head on over to seasonsingspodcast.com and click on the little cup in the corner. I'm Glenn Warren, and thank you for listening to this serving of Seasons Eatings. Seasons Eatings is also part of the Christmas Podcast Network. Whatever you like about Christmas and the holidays... There's bound to be a podcast just waiting for you to discover. Head on over to christmaspodcast.com to find all the latest episodes. All music for Seasons Eatings is used under the Creative Commons license.